that if you are to watch 30 different wheel throwing videos, you're probably going to see 30 different techniques. Everybody does it just a little bit different. Um, and there's no, well, there is a wrong way and a right way, but there are some variations of the right way. So um, I'm going to show how I do it. And if that does not work for you, I suggest watching videos and videos and videos. And the more you can watch since we've got YouTube is it's a great resource. You're going to see different techniques. And I've even watched videos on YouTube and learned different techniques to try to teach to students that are having difficulty um, throwing on the wheel. So um, the first thing is that you're going to sit on the smaller side of the wheel um, because you're going to have to get real close. And I actually pull my stool all the way up and my legs are sitting on the, the splash guards. So these are splash guards. Um, there's a pedal, there's a power switch down here on the right side. So the first thing that I say is if you're pressing the pedal and nothing's happening, then you need to check two things. You need to make sure that the power is on and then you also need to make sure that it's plugged in. So those are the two number one reasons why, oh, the wheel's not working. It's because the power's maybe not on or it's not plugged in. So um, the splash guards need to uh, click into place and they kind of go together like Legos. They have these little holes and then they have little nubs that those slide into. Um, and you want to make sure that the splash guard is on securely or you will have water that starts to seep down and onto the floor and around your shoes and that sort of thing. So if you look down real low, there's a metal piece below the wheel head and um, these slide in underneath that and then it clicks, clicks together. So um, this thing should not be moving around too much. So this feels pretty secure. Um, I have clay, I have water, I have a small sponge, I have an assortment of tools. So your hands are gonna get pretty covered with clay. So the more you can set up your area and be prepared, then you're not gonna have to stop and be like, oh, I need this or that. You, if you have not um, thrown on the wheel before, you've probably experienced that in the kitchen where maybe you're like breading chicken or like something that's super messy with your hands and then you have to stop because you have to get something else. So it's, it's the same way. So I actually have a couple um, balls of clay here to start with just in case I mess up. Uh, it has been over a year since I've thrown on the wheel, but you know, once you learn how to do it, um, it kind of comes second nature. So I've put my hair up, I've taken off um, my lanyard because I don't want that to get sucked onto the wheel and, and choke me. So if you have a necklace that dangles, maybe put it into your shirt when you're throwing on the wheel. Um, I do not have any rings on. Um, if you, I would probably recommend taking off rings, watches, smart watches, um, that sort of thing, because they will, um, if they don't get clay on them, they'll get wet. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, if you have a towel or a extra shirt, you can definitely drape that um, in your lap area. But as long as you're sitting nice and close to the wheel and you've got this splash guard going, you should be okay um, as far as the, the clay goes. So um, I'm going to take my clay and I'm going to form it into, this has already been wedged by the way, um, and I have some extra um, pieces that have already been wedged and divvied out for you guys to use. Um, luckily I had a student last period that wanted to work with the clay a little bit. So I'm gonna make this into a cone type shape. Think about like a, a Christmas tree or a traffic cone, cone type shape. That's what we're gonna be going for to start out with. So some people say to make a ball, but if we're trying to make a cone shape and we start out with a cone shape, it's a lot easier. Just like if you were trying to make a ball and you started out with a cube, it would be harder than if you had a ball of clay. So um, I'm then going to be putting this cone in the center of this wheel. So um, this one has a wheel head on it. Um, the one next to me does not. Same 
same difference. Um, if you're using one that does not have the plastic bat on it, you'll see rings and that will make it easier for you to figure out where the center is. If um, you're using one with a plastic bat on it, you can just take a little bit of water on your finger and kind of make a ring and then you know that that's where the center is and I'm just going to pop it on there. So it takes a little bit of, little bit of force but I don't wanna slam it on there like a pancake and lose that um, cone type shape. So the next thing I'm going to do is just kind of go around with my finger and I'm going to make a seal between the plastic bat and the clay. That's gonna help keep it from having water go underneath and have the clay slide off when I'm, when I'm working. So um, that's just, can just manually turn the wheel head to do that. Um, and then I'm ready to center. So the first step of working with clay on the wheel is going to be centering. So I'll go through the two kind of motions that I'm going to be making and, um, and then uh, you'll see it in motion. So I am going to take my elbows in towards my belly. They're anchored down in and I'm going to push the clay away from me. I'm going to do that very slowly, and then I'm going to come back very, very slowly. Then the next thing that I'm going to do is flatten the, the clay a little bit. So um, I'll go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna put a little bit of water on the clay, a little bit on my hands. As I push away from me, you can see that, that that clay is starting to cone up naturally. My hands are rested, the sides are rested on the wheel, and I'm slowly then bringing them back. This is, here and here is where my hands are touching the wheel. And slowly, Coming back. So you can see that that's gotten a little bit taller. Now I'm going to push it down. I'm just going to use this part of my hand. And again, you can see my elbows are real tight. So there's a little bit of wobble in that clay, which means it's not centered. So I need to repeat those two motions until there's no more wobble in the clay. The biggest thing that I see that happens where clay ends up off center is if I go like this real fast and then I move my hands away real fast, you see that that wobble has gotten more pronounced. So if you are not moving incredibly slow, you can knock the clay off of center. See how there's less, less wobble in there. And again, when I take my hands off of this motion, it's a very, very slow release of pressure and taking that away. So um, does it look centered now? Is there any wobble in it? I'm seeing people say no. Anybody feel like maybe a little bit? Not sure. So here's a good test for knowing whether the clay is centered or not. Close your eyes and put your fingers on the clay. And if you think, feel your fingers going like this, which there, I can feel that just a little bit, then it's not centered. So you can, um, sometimes we rely on our vision too much, but you can actually feel if it's not centered by just closing your eyes a little bit. So I'm gonna do that again, just pushing the clay away from me very, very slowly bringing my hands back. That feels pretty good. So, so um, the next thing I'm going to do is start to open up the clay. And um, when I do that, I'm going to be using 
my left hand. Are there any lefties in here? Okay, so just you'll use your right hand as a stabilizer. If you're right-handed, use your left hand as a stabilizer. And so this is this is like my prop. I'm keeping this elbow down in towards my body, and I'm leaving this hand on the wheel. It does not mean that that hand has to be touching the clay, but this is gonna help keep this hand stable so that I can do some other things without the elbow being as anchored. So I'm just gonna wet the clay a little bit, and I'm going to just put my fingers in the center of the clay and slowly start to press down. This does not have to be done in one motion or one movement. And I'm slowly, slowly, slowly bringing the fingers out of the clay. So that's gonna give me a little divot um, in the top part of the clay. I'm just gonna put a little bit more water in there. And now I'm going to take my fingers down until they're about a quarter inch from the bottom. So um, if you have long fingernails, this is sometimes where people with fingernails are gonna poke right through the bottom. Um, I have none. So <laughs> that's all, I, the only good thing about not having long fingernails is you, you'll be great on the potter's wheel. So if you put your finger on the wheel next to the clay, you can kind of see where the top of that clay is gonna hit your finger and you can kind of guess, take a quarter inch off of that. So for me, it's like mid knuckle um, and I want to stop there. I don't want to go any lower or it's going to start to get too close to the bottom. So I'm um, going to go ahead and again, this, this hand, um, my left hand is just stabilizing my right hand and everything that I do is going to be very slow and slowly going down in, slowly, slowly, slowly lifting my fingers straight out. So they're going straight down, they're going straight up. I'm not pulling or touching the sides or anything like that. And good, if you want to look on the inside, that, that is fantastic. Um, so there's just a hole in the center that's about the width of my two fingers. So the next thing I'm going to do, since you can't, you don't have x-ray vision and you can't see inside, I'm going to bring my fingers back down into the bottom. And then I'm going to slowly, slowly, slowly start to pull that clay towards myself. And again, remember when we made the pinch pops and I said don't stretch the clay too fast or too quickly. So you just very, very lightly. And once you have or feel that pressure or resistance, slowly release that pressure or resistance until your fingers aren't touching anything and then bring them up out of the clay. So you don't want to pull and then bring them up along the edge of the clay. Not quite yet. So just putting a little bit of water in there. So now I'm slowly releasing that pressure. I'm bringing my fingers back towards the center of the clay and then I'm bringing them out. So if you guys want to check out the inside of that pot. So it's like how much do you want to pull that clay out? It depends on the shape of the vessel that you're making. Um, I ask that you guys sketched out three different design concepts. Up on the TV screen I've got some different design concepts and like different shapes. So for this project, I'm only asking that you come up with a three inch pot. This is already three inches. However, the walls are way too thick. So it's gonna end up being bigger, which is fine. So um, that, that's a minimum size there. So now I need to make the walls of the pot thinner. So just like when we made the pinch pots and you had to go about a quarter inch, like you're holding a pencil, that's about how thin you want the walls of your of your pot. So the next motion that I'm going to do is, and this is how this is how I do it, is I like to um, use a hand, my one hand is a stabilizer and then the dominant hand, I'm going to take my two fingers and I'm going to pinch one finger inside, one finger outside like this. And I'm slowly and very, very lightly pinching. 
and I'm gonna like one one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Bring your fingers up a tiny bit. One one thousand, two one thousand, three one thousand. Bring them up a tiny bit. You're gonna keep doing that until you get about a quarter inch from the top. So this um, lip at the top, you want to keep that a little bit thicker while you're throwing until the end part of throwing when you can make it a little bit thinner because that's going to help keep everything stable. So just like if you look at anything that's made out of plastic, the top, just like yogurt or sour cream or anything like that, the top of the plastic's thicker because that gives the, the um, container more stability. So we'll do that. So I'm going to slow the wheel down about half of the speed and also notice that this is different from driving. I don't have my foot on the pedal at all because you don't want any speed variation while you're throwing because that can knock the piece off of center. So once I set the speed, I just kind of like put that thing away so that I don't have to worry about accidentally changing the speed while I'm throwing. So I'm just gonna get my hands wet here again. One, two, three, bringing it up a tiny bit. One, two, three, bringing it up a tiny bit. One, two, three, up a little bit more. One, two, three, this little goober. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do that multiple times, just like with the pinch pots. It doesn't all have to happen at once. Just very, very slowly. and we're really going to be trying to make a cylinder shape. So if you look at my sketches up there, one of them is a cylinder, like a can shape, but every, all of those pieces up there start out that way, that same way. So um, once you have a cylinder, and I'm gonna switch, switch it up, right hand down, left hand pinch. You don't have to do this, I'm just, do this for the lefties. And my elbows are in real tight and close. All right, so the walls are a good thickness now, and this is a good size for the project, and I could stop at this point, or I could change the form a little bit. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to change the form um, and then I'll show you how to cut the piece off. So I'm just going to get my hands wet and if I want this to be more of a bowl, sh bowl shape, okay, elbows in and I'm just going to slowly start to stretch this clay out. And when I take my fingers away from stretching out, you bring it very slowly in towards the center and then up and away from the clay, never along the edges. So now it's starting to look a little bit more like a bowl. I'll even stretch it out just a little bit more. Fingers wet. Pinch that edge a little bit because I left it thinner. So um, this is a good, a good shape. Um, if I don't like how wide this is, you can always make sure your fingers are wet and start to bring that back up. Um, you don't want to play with the, the form too much because then you'll start to lose some stability and structure in the clay. So I've got a little bit of water in at the bottom of my bowl, so I'm just going to squeeze my sponge out and use that sponge to get the excess water on the bottom of the, the bowl out. If you leave it in there and then it starts to dry, it will actually crack the bottom of your pot because the bottom is a lot wetter than the other, the other parts. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is to cut into the bottom edge or bottom rim of the pot a little bit. And um, I'm just gonna use a, wooden 
modeling tool to do that. You don't want the bottom to have like a bunch of clay that's out on the wheel. So I'm just going to clean up some of that. Um, we're actually going to trim these on the wheel uh, on Friday if you get a good successful one. And this will actually cut down on the work that you have to do in the trimming process. So um, I've just got a little bit of, of extra messy stuff down on the wheel so that it's got a nice foot to it. And then I'm going to cut this piece off. So to cut it off, I'm going to stop the wheel and I'm going to squeeze some water on the wheel head with my sponge. I have a um, small board that I'm gonna be putting this onto and I have my wire clay cutter. So I'm going to wrap this wire so that it's nice and tight and that the distance between my thumbs is about the distance of between the bottom of the pot. Hold it real tight and I'm going to yank that water straight through the bottom or straight across the bottom. If you're not holding it tight and you're not holding it down, then the wire can actually lift and cut through the bottom of the pot. So that's why you want to, you can, you know, get this whole way and then cut the bottom out and have to start over again. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. And that looks like nothing happened there, but actually something did. Now I'm just taking my, my pinky fingers and I'm sliding it on that water. That water's going to work like a sled. I'm going to lift it up, pop it on that wooden board. Then I need to clean the wheel. So um, to clean the wheel, I'm just going to turn the wheel on. You could use any type of wooden modeling tool and I just scraped off that excess clay. And then I'm going to, I thought I had a red bucket around here, did I not? I don't have that, okay. All right, so I'm just gonna use this sponge, clean the wheel head. Grab me a red bucket from up above the sink there. Thank you. All right, so these red buckets are going to have some various things for, for cleaning. Um, you can see that this wheel is fairly clean. Um, and I, I just want to make sure that I'm getting up all of the excess clay. So I'm going to get these little goobers out. I'm going to take the big sponge and soak up all the water from here. I'm going to make sure my tools go back. Wipe off this back part. Wipe off the sides of the splash guard. And I'm going to um, just use the sink to clean out this sponge so that I've got a completely clean sponge with water and come back and do a once over. And you can see I've got a tiny bit of clay on my pants, but for those of you that thought that this was going to be like incredibly messy and that you'd be coming out of here looking like you went for like a mud mask all over your body, it's not, you know, it's not going to be that way. It doesn't have to be that way. No, it could, it could end up that way. Um, so that is it. Um, so any questions? All right, so three inches is the minimum and that's like, you know, that big. That's this is like twice that size and in any one direction. So it could be three inches tall, could be three inches wide. Um, however you guys want to do that. Um, the, just the last thing is next to the plastic bag drawer is a cabinet that says bats. It's between the yellow bucket and the plastic bag drawer. That's where the wooden boards are. So, um, 
you know, it might take some working together like, hey, could you get me a wire play tool or could you get me a bat because I forgot to grab it and you guys might have to help each other out a little bit. Um, we obviously do not have enough wheels for everybody, um, so you guys will have to take